Do you want to see a really big problem with the game so far? Everything looks fine here. We've got trees, players starting over here. And if I come in here and I load another map, hey, check this out. The player and all the trees are in the same exact locations, regardless of what map that you do. And this is because the map files currently are just loading the tile data. They're not actually loading entities. In this video, the files that we use to load the map are also going to load entity data as well. Let's talk about how we're going to structure our file. So let's come into start.map. And right now you can see there's only tile data in here. Uh, one way that we can do this is we can break up the file generally by these minus signs. So maybe the first section will be the tile stuff. And then this next section will be the entity data. We could basically assign a number to each different kind of entity. So players, for example, might be zero. Trees might be one. So to do that, check this out. We can come in here, we can say zero. And then we need to know where this uh, you know, entity is. And maybe we need to specify other things. So to put this, we can use maybe commas. And then we can say 15 and 15. So zero, for example, is the player. Like the first number is the ID or what, which entity that you're going to do. And then uh, the next two numbers are the location. And if we do this, we actually could have sort of any number of different kinds of entities. And then we can place them at, you know, whatever kind of location that we want. Um, so let's now talk about how we're going to code this. We come in here to source, create a new folder, data, and we'll come in here and we'll make a new fi a file called objects.py. I really like the factory pattern for something like this. Take a look at this uh, code here. So we have three factories that make different kinds of entities. So uh, our first one makes a player. The second one makes a tree and the third one makes a rock. So we have uh, three different functions or lambdas. Lambdas are kind of a shorthand way of making a function. Um, they're uh, anonymous, so they don't have to have a name. You can just put this and write it wherever you want in your code and bam, you have a function. Um, it returns this. So anyway, basically you have a list of a bunch of different functions that each create some kind of entity. So this one creates a player, this one creates a tree, and this one creates a rock. Next, we'll have a function that creates an entity. So it takes in an ID, X and Y, and then optionally some kind of data after it. Anyway, it gets whichever factory that it is. So like if ID is two, then it's gonna get this function here. And then it calls that function. It calls whichever function it got, and then uh, from there, it sets the position. We can multiply it by 32 just to have it snap to the grid, just so it's nice and easy. And then uh, we just return the entity. Taking a look at this here real quick, if we go into the map file, um, we can have the ID, X, and Y. Compare it there. We have ID, X, and Y. And then optionally, we can have data after it. Like we can say like Walter, or something after that if we want to name however many other arguments that you want to pass after that. So now our, if you think about it, our map, right? We have a core map. The map really only does tiles and uh, we really need kind of a new uh, class to do this. So in core, I'm going to create a new um, file called area.py. An area class is going to combine both the map that holds the tiles and entities. We'll come in here and we will import our create entity function that we created earlier, um, as well as the map class. The area class uh, is now going to be responsible for loading the uh, file instead of the map. So um, it'll have uh, basically a folder location where it should load it from. It's also going to be a, uh, a static or singleton uh, reference to an area because we'll only have one uh, at a time. And then uh, we created a function here for a uh, load file because maybe we might want to go to a different area or whichever. Um, so we can call this later as we need it. One other quick thing to note, um, we're going to take in tile types. 
each map is not going to have its own set of tiles. The tile types are going to be basically the same uh, regardless of what map you're going to load. When we load the file, we'll load it like a standard file, open it, read all the data, and close it. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll split the file by the minus sign. If you recall, if you take a look at this uh, file here, we have all the tile data up at the top, and then we have all the uh, entity data down at the bottom. So going into here, we'll split it by the minus sign. And then the first one's going to be the tile map data, and then the second one's going to be the entity data. The map will be just loaded as usual. So we'll come in here and uh, pass in the tile map data. The map we're going to have to slightly modify because the map's not loading uh, any like file anymore itself. So we'll get to that uh, in a second. Now to load the entities, let's actually uh, keep a list of it. And then we're going to split it by a new line. Um, and then this part ignores the first uh, new line. The reason being is if you look at the actual file itself, it's going to be kind of hard to see, but after the little minus sign, we actually have a new line after that. Um, so we're just going to throw away. It's actually going to have the first one be empty, so we'll just throw away uh, that one. Next, the last part of this is uh, we're going to go line by line, and we're going to put this in a try um, because, you know, when you're typing this in, you might... Uh, you know, mess up, you might put like a dot here or something. If we fail to load a single entity, um, then we want to just, we can just print and say, hey, error parsing, whatever line, and then it'll just print the contents. Anyway, what we do is we further split it by the, uh, by the commas. So if you come in here and uh, you're looking at each entity, so we'll split by each of these commas. So we'll have like one, you know, the first thing, second thing, and third thing. And uh, if we come into that, first thing is going to be the ID, second thing is going to be X, and then the third thing is going to be Y. And then what we can do is we can just uh, call our create entity uh, function, uh, passing in all of those different things. We're going to pass items at the end, uh, just so that it has all of the arguments. So if you if you decide to put anything else after here, like you know a name or any other arguments you want those will also get passed in, right? They're not gonna be set as X and Y, but you can optionally pass in anything else into uh, a entity to kind of further customize it uh, if needed. Our map class is gonna change quite a, uh, just a little bit to sort of adapt to this. Um, go into your map.py first. I think we should just store the tile size up here um, just as a little refactor. So we'll say tile size equals 32. Um, that way over here, we don't actually need to, uh, keep track of it anymore. Perfect. Next, what we're going to do is, uh, we don't need to load the file anymore. We're going to have, uh, data instead. So instead of map file here, we'll come in here, we'll say data. And now all of this stuff about loading the file, we can just actually get rid of it because the other file is going to load, uh, that data for us. One other refactor too, um, I ran into an issue later on in the draw function. I'm just gonna import the camera here uh, and uh, we'll go from there. I hit a really weird bug, so we'll just, uh, anyway, but this is the solution to fix this and we'll just get rid of it up here. Going into our main.py uh, file, let's go ahead and import our new area class that we uh, created. And then if we come down here, instead of making a map, we're gonna create an area instead. And then, yeah, and we can get rid of this map part. We can now get rid of all of these or just comment them out. Um, and then let's also comment out the player. So we shouldn't have to create any of the entities. If we go into and test it, we, uh, yeah, we have a player and now there's a single tree because it loaded it from, if you take a look at this, start.map, uh, let's see here. Let's put this guy uh, always on top. If you look at this, we've got, um, yeah, so you have like zero, uh, and then it's created the player at 15, 15, and then it loaded like another tree, and it's at seven and nine. So seven and nine. We can come in here. We can just now check this out. You can create another tree at 18, 18, and uh, yeah, now we have another tree at 18 and 18. I didn't change the code at all. So now it's loading it completely from the uh, the map. 
Another thing uh, real quick that we can do to sort of improve this is uh, if you take a look at your main.py, um, number one, we can get rid of all this code now. If you want to save this code and put it you know, in your file instead, absolutely. And then um, the tile kinds I also think should be brought out of main.py. So let's jump into data and we'll do new file and we'll just say tile types.py. And then let's go to main. We can just cut this, go into here. We need to import tile kind, so we'll say from, and then in main.py, now we need to import it. What is it called? Uh, tile type, or tile types, or tile kinds. Yeah, there we go, perfect. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, let's just run this, make sure that everything works. And yeah, there we go. So now, What's also cool about this is our main.py file is getting a whole lot smaller. And now it's only like 50 lines of code, but it's calling these different pieces of, you know, the game and sort of just from a very high level, it's not micromanaging anymore. It's just sort of letting all the classes do their work. So anyway, thank you so much for uh, watching this. To test it, go ahead and just create another map. I'm going to come in here and do that. Let's put the player at four and four. And then we can come in here and let's try the rock. Uh, by the way, the rock texture is in the uh, code, the source code, if you want to download it. And you can also put your other entity, you know, other things too as well. Main.py, let's, all we got to do is change this to be somewhere.map and we'll run it. And now it, yeah, it loads. I guess the, the player's in the water, so they're kind of stuck. But yeah, it does load a uh, rock there um successfully so you can now build out any of your areas with uh entities and also tiles purely based on the um the file that you do so thank you so much for watching i hope that this has been beneficial gives you ideas for your game and how you can kind of structure your data or just at least one option that you can use um and uh, i hope you have a good rest of your day